Hello everyone, I'm Sibana Lotl. You can call me Ori. Um, <laughs> I'm going to review the Zenslap small drawing tablet today along with the quick keys. I used this tablet for some sketching for the last video. So stay tuned if you want to see the speed sketch and along with me explaining my video process for how I made it. Or, or you can skip to it. I, I see y'all. <laughs> uh, when I opened the box, I, I got a thank you card along with instructions on how to download the tablet drivers. Uh, the tablet, the USB-C wire, the pen case. I also got a tablet bag. Uh, not only can like it hold like the stuff that you got with the tablet, you can also like hold the quick keys in it as well, which is really nice. When when I opened up the quick keys box, I got the quick keys remote, USB-C wire, and also the quick keys case, which you sort of don't need when you have the tablet bag. In the pen case, there's six extra pen nibs, six felt pen nibs, and two pens. There's one smaller than the other one. As you can see here, it's almost the same size as a pencil. It also came with a, a tool to extract pen nibs. I can also show you like here how you can like take it out and when you do you can also like replace it with another one and push it in until like, you hear a click. The pen case also came with like two USB plug thingies. I forgot what these are but you can use these for like the Bluetooth connection if you want like a wireless setup. I think it would have been nice if it came with a pen holder though so I wouldn't lose my pen. I am very forgetful so sometimes I, I put it down it's gone. This tablet is a no-screen tablet, which is great for my posture, since I keep hunching over my screen tablet to see versus sitting up straight and just looking at my monitor. There's corners that indicate where the display area is. You can also change the colors in the Zen Slabs application. You can change the colors to white, pink, or magenta. It shows a magenta in, in person anyway. Neon blue, light blue, yellow, orange, and red. When I drew with the tablet, it felt really nice and smooth compared to the other tablets I used before. I like how it came with two pens too, so people could have more options to choose from. For me, I like the bigger pen since I'm used to it and it has like a much nicer grip than like the thin one. It also has buttons on the tablet pen if you also want to like set up shortcuts for it. The tablet also has three buttons on the top, but I really don't use them anyway since the placing was sort of very inconvenient when like drawing. I don't want to move my right hand to go up. It, it would have been nice to have the keys on the side or something if people didn't get the quick keys if they wanted people to use the tablet shortcuts anyway. Uh, speaking of quick keys, I do have them placed to the left of the drawing tablet for shortcuts when needed. It's very nice that this can hold up to 40 shortcuts per program. <laughs> you can also change the dial to different settings too if you if you want. For me, I would change it to rotate the canvas or when I'm animating and need to switch between frames back and forth, I can use the dial to go back and forth quickly instead of tapping two keys back and forth like mashing my buttons until like it breaks, which sort of did happen for it, but we're not gonna go into that um <laughs> you can save up to four dial shortcuts per application too now now you you may be asking ori why per application who in their right mind would ever have more than one art application i would if i had money oh brother this guy anyway it doesn't have to be art related either you can have shortcuts saved for editing programs as well if if certain editing programs by the same company make different shortcuts for both for no reason <coughs> someone hey this this helps me have the same shortcuts on the same keys for something like that would be very unfortunate that happens to anyone wouldn't it <laughs> it's also nice that when you switch to a program you had saved shortcuts for, it would also switch to shortcuts immediately when you click on it. Well, sometimes. I don't know why, but for me, um, I would have to open up the program back up if I switched to a different program and like click on the one I had before. Which I don't mind, but that might be just be, be a me thing. I <laughs> I gotta say though, this tablet and quickies are pretty nice. The tablet is a bit too small for me and sort of makes my hand cramp after a while from drawing since I got so used to drawing on bigger tablets. I will continue using the quick keys though. It's really helpful and I still use it every day. I would recommend this for beginner to intermediate artists if you have a bit of money to spare. And also okay with no screen tablets. They're quite a bit of money so if you do have some money to spare and are interested, you can check the links in the description below or just look up zslabs.com. Now onto the speed sketch. I... I only recorded four of these. I forgot to record the rest. Quote unquote forgot. I um... Drawing with the tablet sort of hurt my hand. So I only had four ready <laughs> for the video <laughs> here. Anyway, the way I do videos is like a little different from other people. Sometimes I would even do a completely different method for sketching for like one video and then I switch back to another video. It's good to like try something new every now and then, but I unfortunately do it when I work on new things. 
not unfortunate. I just apparently do it when it's inconvenient for me. <laughs> but hey, in the beginning, you can see me using two different colors on the canvas. I also usually turn the canvas to a darker color to help my eyes, because looking at something bright for too long hurts. It hurts my eyes. Cannot do that. <laughs> but I use the lighter color for simple sketching or adding extra stuff for like composition or notes for myself. The darker color is for making the sketch more refined or important details for later too. When I'm making the sketches for the video, I also make notes for myself now because I'm really forgetful and I go back to things so it usually helps. It's not like I draw something out and then I forget it after like 10 minutes. I take a lot of breaks when I'm drawing or animating or like anything. If you can take breaks, please, please take breaks. It's really important for your health. Too. Drawing for too long can also hurt your hand or back if you hunch over the drawing tablet like me. I usually take breaks because when I work on something for too long in one sitting, I get really sick of the thing I'm working on. And, and then like poof, I, I, I really don't want to work on it anymore. Taking breaks in between helps to keep going, even if I'm really excited to work on one part. I can save that excitement for later and, and then keep going afterwards. It's also good to take a step back and look at your work and think to yourself if it works together or not. One of the sketches I did for the video, I took it out because it didn't look right. I didn't like it. Um, don't force yourself to finish or like go through with something if you don't like it. If you can and if you want to, you can always like make different sketches or different ideas to put in that place. So it's not like you just don't like it and then you force yourself to go through with it. And then and then product is just not worth it. It's not worth it. This isn't really video or like animating related, but usually when I draw. Like for myself, for illustration. I usually do multiple sketches for the same drawing. And then I choose the one I like the most. If I just do one sketch and go through with it, it makes me dislike it since it didn't feel like I was going for or I had like more ideas or like concepts and stuff. That's sort of the same idea I have for videos. When I get an idea, I try to sketch it like all out. I can't immediately, even if it's messy and sort of can't understand. Which is why it's important to write notes with the sketches for the video. I would come back and see if I still like it or not. Or if it's like what I'm going for. If it's not, I do a different one or just replace it. After a bit, when I finish all the sketches, I check if I still like it and then go on to lining the frames and coloring it on illustration project or like canvas. Don't be afraid to make multiple canvases or projects in a folder. I usually do this so I know which one I'm working on and keep track of things easier. Because if I do it all in one, then it's gonna be all jumbled mess. Uh, for this video, I would just finish each frame one by one in order, and then I put it back into the animation project on Clip Studio Paint. For some of the scenes, I even did it in Clip Studio Paint and exported it as it is instead of editing it at all. For, for like some scenes, it would have helped me if I like edit it for some scenes but i didn't for some reason i want to say how i don't do it like i do all the scenes and then i edit all of them at the end well sometimes but most of the time i usually edit while i'm finishing frames or or like scenes not after though this helps me see the video like lined up with the audio and see if the scenes are okay with each other after i finish all the frames i would put the remaining scenes into the project and add extra details or like transitions to give it like an extra oomph when I finish the editing, I export it and then make the thumbnail for YouTube and then boom, I'm finally done. There, there's my video process. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is really jumbled. This is my first time speaking for a video like this, but I hope you like it. Also, um, if you're interested in the tablet and quick keys, you can click on the link down below or look up zenslabs.com. And thank you so much for watching. Remember to take breaks when you can.